I'm going to go over a little bit about how I set up a layout file for you know, any particular drawing and specifically how I use the trays um, and how it helps to really organize the drawing. Uh, while mine is not necessarily perfectly organized, um, there's some things that I use that really help. Uh, I'll just walk through each one of the trays. I mean, color is obvious of setting colors for elements like line work. Um, as well as uh, backgrounds for, for instance, I talked about symbols before. You can set them as, to be transparent if you want, which is nice to see information beyond. Or anything, if you want to pop, you can set it to a really dark color or light color or white to mask. It's many uses in the color tray, and that specifically affects things like the shape style where you can adjust the color um, for the fill as well as the stroke. Um, shape style is really how you organize and work on all of your line work. Uh, you can access all the different types of line types that you need. You can set the thickness. They do sh only go up to two, but you can actually plug in anything you want in there. Um, a lot of people think that's the limit, but you can if I grab a pencil line. If I plug in 12, it'll draw a very thick line, as you can see. Um, not that you're going to use a 12, you might have use for it in creating a title block, I guess. Um, and then, of course, you have your different choices for endings and terminations of arrows. Uh, a lot of times I use this arrow right here, and then you can set that to whatever point size you like as well. Um, text style obviously edits your text. Uh, a lot of people ask about when you deal with dimensions. How do you deal with dimensions? The key to working with dimensions and being consistent is open your dimension, change your text style to whatever you want. Um, also change your shape style to what you want and you can change that thickness and then your dimension style forever will be set that way. Makes it very simple. Um, here you can edit your point style of the tick marks to make them larger there you can adjust the thickness of the line so you have your dimensions set to whatever you want. Um, Textile is great. I love that it is the way it works and not like some crazy .shx files. They are actual real fonts. So it works very well and you can set those to different alignments as well as whatever point size you like. And again, you can enter your point size too. You don't have to select specific from the list. Um, dimension style. Uh, this just goes through basic arrangement of the dimension, not necessarily the font or the line weights associated with it. Uh, you want to set this up, of course, before you want to set it up, in my case, architectural into the scale that I'm dealing with. Um, I do set the precision pretty high, so I like to make sure that I am picking specific points. Um, the other pointer I mentioned in one of the other uh, segments has to do with dimensioning. If you're dimensioning to the rastered model, sometimes you can pick up points that are within your model that may not necessarily be the points that you want. As an architect, we dimension specifically to walls and openings. So I dimension really to the line work. So a lot of times, as I mentioned, I will shut off the or take the view of the SketchUp model itself off and just dimension to the line work so it goes very quickly. Um, pages. You can see I have lots of pages in here. I'll zoom out. Uh, in this particular file, there are six pages of different floor plans. Um, speed, of course, is always kept by using raster imagery. Um, I use combination of raster and vector, vector for line work only, which you can see makes it so that layout actually performs very quickly. Um, if you try to vector everything, you will have a very slow, frustrating experience. Uh, that's primarily just because vector rendering a large model like this would take a lot of time. Layers are great. You can customize them to whatever you want. I have a system where it's, it's very simple. Uh, it's based, based all on visibility. I keep floor plan notes on a layer. I have my grid lines on a separate layer. Dimensions on a separate layer. The line work that I use on a separate layer. 
Keep room names on a separate layer, not on a note layer, simply because sometimes during presentations I don't want to have all the extraneous notes, just the room, na room names. Uh, some of these I could delete because uh, I don't use them. Default or unique elements I don't use because I set up my unique elements individually based on how I want them presented. On every inside page it's usually limited to things like the title block. Uh, SketchUp model I always keep on its own layer. Most often, once it's in, I lock it so I don't accidentally edit it or move it. Um, scrapbooks I went over in detail. It's a great default tray. Uh, has all the scrapbooks and all the information that you want to have on typical drawings. Um, very powerful tray in the entire uh, um, array here. SketchUp model is obvious. It allows you to look. I'll unlock that so you can see. What it does is I highlight the SketchUp model, tells me what my scene is, uh, it tells me what my scale is. Um, I usually always keep this preserved scale on resize. Um, I can adjust shadow and fog if I like to. I try to keep everything related to the SketchUp model focused and saved within the scene itself. So I tend not to edit any of these elements unless I have a specific thing I'm doing really fast. Um, or want to show a client something specific on a presentation. Um, and you can see here I keep it in raster unless it is line work and then I will vector render the line work. But organizing it in this fashion really keeps it, for me, very easy to access any component that I would need to access on the entire aspect of working with the trays. Um, some of the other elements in layout that you really have to get used to because it does work like I said, not like AutoCAD, is how things move about um, and, and how they work. Like everything is assigned, um, when you pick it, it gives a grip point basically that's central about the object. If you pick two objects, that grip point changes again central about that object, but that grip point can be moved anywhere. And so when I am moving something, if I pick a point, where I know it needs to be its origin, which in this case a grid line would be a building corner, it becomes very easy then to move that to any point which might be considered a corner. You know, if I wanted to add a grid line at that corner, it's picking up the point anywhere very accurately and easily. And it has some inference, just like SketchUp itself here, about those two points, uh, which works very simple. It's become a very easy way to establish grid lines and lay the grid lines out. Um, if you want to copy them, you just hit Control, and you can copy them where it will inference in that line. So if for some reason I was picking up a point about that, I could copy it directly to that corner. Release. If you release too early, it thinks you're still in move, in move mode if you release the Control button. So it's something to be aware of and not get frustrated with because that does tend to happen sometimes. Um, but it makes for a very nice way to, you know, for instance, that inference point is also a point. If, for instance, I wanted to add that grid line there, it's also the point you can rotate about, which is very powerful because it stays glued to that point. You can rotate it at whatever angle you need it to. Um, it's a feature, actually, I really like how they work. Dimensions, too. It's very easy to edit dimensions. You double-click on it, and you can grab those points to move that dimension anywhere you wanted to. As well as if you wanted to align dimensions, it's kind of nice. So this one is not looking good being out of place with the other one. I can grab that point. I can just bring it right to that point. So then I know those dimensions are aligned. Likewise, if I wanted to bring this one out. Um, you see me double clicking on the dimensions. This is the main reason I actually do lock the SketchUp model so I don't accidentally double click into the SketchUp model while I'm doing this type of editing. But it makes for a very clean way to set up your dimensions. Very easy to align things and organize them based on on how you can edit them. Um, dimensions likewise when you double click you can edit several different th components. You can actually edit the lines itself. You can edit the text, which we shouldn't be doing. Um, you can change individual grip points. 
um, you can grab grip points here and that dimension will change with it. So you can pin it to different parts of the model if you like. Um, it's, it's very accurate and it's very accurate to the model. It's actually a good check on the model if sometimes you, and this has happened where I'll get a dimension, I'll look at it and go 30, 3 foot 1 and 5 eighths, why is that happening? Well, in this case, if I actually go into the model, the reason being is I'm actually showing trim, so that dimension actually is accurate in that case. The overhang is three feet, but that's actually to the structure, and then when you add the inch and a half trim on top of that set to an angle at the 1 64th scale, it comes out to three feet, one and five eighths. So that is how that works in that case. These dimensions, and you can see that happens here, while it's not hitting a corner, it's because I dimension my roof plan before I put the detail of all the trim on it because these are the dimensions they will build to it, but the actual model will reflect that there's trim on it. And so they're all set back the dimension of the trim, so these dimensions are all to the frame. So again, very accurate, um, and also another way you can check your model because um, your model needs to be really accurate to use this type of method. Um, as I mentioned, I spend most of my time in the SketchUp model and really not that much time in layout. Layout is just for getting the notation, dimensions, simple line work. And again, even line work like you're seeing here, which is representing the footprint, is line work that I create in SketchUp and copy and paste into layout. That way I know it's very accurate to the model as opposed to me trying to interpret it through looking at scaled dimensions as an example. Um, on, I'll flip to an elevation sheet. It, I use all the similar concepts. Uh, the things that really change between the sheets is how you structure your layers. Um, everything else works the same way. Dimensions work the same way. Again, they're always very accurate to your model. Um, it just depends on how you're picking certain dimensions. Um, sometimes you can grab a point here and a point here and you're wondering why it's not capturing the actual dimension. It is, but it is actually capturing it in three dimensions back at that point to that point. Um, so you have to be conscious of how you are dimensioning in order to avoid things like that from happening. Um, but again, in every, any drawing, I'm utilizing every one of those trays that are within this SketchUp model. I keep mine edit quality. Where is that? Document setting. Um, I just had changed it to low to see the difference, and I noticed I've been working with it. I had thought I had set it to low, but I have been working with it set to medium. Um, you can see it's actually working very well at that perform, you know, how it's been performing so far. Here's the render time on medium. Considering the size of the file, it's a pretty fast render time. Um, you can make it work faster by setting it to low. Um, I have output quality set to medium as well because it actually, output quality even at low I've found is extremely high. The PDF file size created by layout is very large which I like because the quality of the drawings is really high. Um, I will open up this same file. This is that same file we're looking at and I'll show, I'll zoom in, the quality is really high. You can see much higher than, oh. see the quality level is very high and this was exported at medium and even going, zooming in even closer, again like I said before, your nose on the sheet still very crisp. So if speed has become an issue, you can certainly set your edit quality to low. I wouldn't worry about your export quality. Um, I would set that as high as you can comfortably without creating files that are unmanageable. But if you're having trouble with speed, that's what I would recommend is going to low. Medium works for mine and my machine is nothing crazy. It's a 
i7 2600K processor with 16 gigs of RAM, um, and it's got a 1 gig NVIDIA 5, GTX 560 Ti video card. So nothing crazy. I think it was a, an $1,100 machine or something like that. But I, I don't find the slowdown with layout particularly um, unless I'm trying to vector render something which I've learned just not to do. I only vector render line work and raster render everything else and speed has not been an issue at all. Um, same with crashing. I have had very minimal crash times. So again, just to keep your speed and um, and flow working in this software, I, I think the key to it is, like I said, do not try to vector or hybrid render your SketchUp models. Um, I have gone through that several times and finally resolved on this is how it's going to work. And to get the crisp line work, I bring the line work in from SketchUp and vector render it. And I think the combination works very well for construction documents. Um, I have had no complaints to date, um, both from building departments as well as contractors. They all really appreciate seeing the color and depth of the drawings.